Hello friends, this is Niladri once again. Welcome to Agile Digest. This is another video on scaled Agile framework uh, as many of you already requested for making some videos on another topics on scaled Agile. So this is what we came up with uh, PI planning. As everyone you know, PI planning is one of the most important part of scaled Agile and that's the heart of our uh, uh, scaled Agile framework. So we'll try to understand uh, what exactly the PI planning in very details. We'll talk about um, each and every part of PI planning, uh, day one, day two, how we are making the uh, dependencies, how we are breaking down stories into features, how we are doing some story point estimations, how we are making our program board, what are the different uh, kinds of program boards we have, and many details. And this particular slides uh, or the PowerPoint that I have made, or uh, this particular video is uh, will be little lengthy, so say stay tuned. In case of you have any questions, any comments, you can type it down in the comment section. I hope you will uh, like this video, and if you like it, please show your uh, uh, feedback by subscribing to us. Click on the bell button as well. Without uh, spending much more time, uh, let's start with the PI planning. As you already know that we have. Uh, covered one of the video on the fundamental of scale agile frameworks and where we have already learned that uh, scale agile framework goes on multiple PIs or program increment and each program increment have uh, four iterations by uh, the recommendation of scale agile. It not necessarily will be having only four. Uh, you can have five or six, but scale agile will recommend is you should have four construction iterations and after that you will be having one IP iteration. IP in the sense innovation and planning iteration. So let's try to understand that if we have three or four teams and everyone will be working on four iterations, at every iteration each team they will be working on development, testing, reviews, uh, many other activities they will be work on. Now uh, if I'm talking about uh, four teams, four iterations, those all are part of one PI or one program increment. One program increment have four development iterations or construction iterations and at the end we'll be having one IP iterations where in the IP iterations we'll be talking about uh, the PI planning. We do some planning for the upcoming PI. So each these four iterations are called uh, PI uh, scope or whatever the PI scope we have, that's my PI for PI1 for an example. Similarly, I will be having one uh, next PI with three teams were working or four teams are working. They are working for iteration five, six, seven, eight, and that's my PI scope two. And similarly, after these, I'll be having one IP iterations and start with my third PI. So each PI, the four iterations under that PI is come after one IP iterations. Now IP iterations is innovation and planning iteration. It's also have a two weeks of time and we'll talk about much more details uh, in upcoming few slides. Let's try to understand a bit of each iterations, what exactly we are doing. At every iterations, we are doing some kind of team events that iteration planning and then we are doing another iterations uh, event that's my uh, review and retrospective when we are closing the each iteration and that's uh, happening for all the teams all the iterations when my four iteration is completing i will be uh, doing my ip iteration and remember that end of the every iterations all the team under the same pi are integrating their development and make a system demo so that system demo is definitely uh, at the end of the every iterations. This is just a recap of what we have done in the last uh, video when we are talking about the fundamental of our uh, scale agile framework. We'll primarily focus on IP iteration and over IP iterations we know that it's the same two weeks of iterations and in this two week of iteration, the last week or the second week, eighth and ninth, will be working on our PI planning. We may take some time on uh, 10th and 7th based on uh, how exactly our, uh, um, our uh, solutions layer is there. We learn that why we need that. 
you may not need that if you just have only one uh, co-located um, PI or one co-located ART, then we may not need that. We will go into uh, the next slide where you can actually try to understand that at the end of every PI planning, we are getting some scope for the upcoming PI. So, here from this diagram you can see at every PI planning, we are getting some scope of the upcoming PI development. So, IP iterations at the top, what you are looking at, we are having our uh, uh, first PI planning, then we are having PI 1, then we are having an another PI planning, we are having PI 2, then we are having another IP iterations and PI planning under that and we are having our PI 3. Let us try to understand what exactly we are having under that IP iteration. We will pick example of one IP iterations and go uh, into that. So, <clears throat> from here I can see we already talked about three IP iterations, but let us take, uh, let us take any one IP iterations and see what exactly we have within that. So, this is the date of my or schedule of my IP iteration where we are concluding one uh, PI and about to plan for the next PI. So, the PI planning that we do on 8th and 9th day of your IP iterations to plan what we will be working on our upcoming PI. So, if you are doing a IP iterations after PI 1, in the PI planning after that within that IP iteration, you will be planning for PI 2. Let us try to understand that. Let us uh, just talk about only the last week. We have uh, and last week will take 4 days, 7, 8, 9, 10. And within this 7, 8, 9, 10, what exactly we are doing? So, this 7, 8, 9, 10, if you are looking into this, this is the time after every PI when we are reaching to our IP iteration, within IP iteration, second week, 8th and 9th day primarily, we are doing our PI planning. And this is what we are trying to understand here. Now, if you arrange this PI, instead of vertical if we have that horizontally so that we can see that every PI we are having one IP iterations, we are doing PI planning, then we are having another PI or execution of the PI, then we are having another IP iteration, we are having PI planning and so on. That is where we are proceeding and at the time of every uh, IP iteration, this is the scope of my PI planning or this is the time of my PI planning when we are executing. And this is actually run by one of our agile release train and we will be going based on uh, how our agile re release train is constructed. This is how uh, we talked about ART. Now, we will uh, talk about uh, the key points of having uh, your uh, PI planning. So, it is a cadence based systems, it increase the rhythm and everyone works together. PI planning is a heartbeat of art. So, if you are working on scaled agile, PI planning is very much essential for you. It, you need to do for your PI planning. PI planning also increase the face to face interactions as you remember the scrum values or agile values and principles. Face to face interaction is much more uh, beneficial when you are working on agile. So, this PI planning give a chance even if you are 125 or 150 members, you get a chance to work as a face to face interactions. Now, remember nowadays uh, people have started working distributedly, uh, many teams working from different geographical locations, even then there are many uh, tools or um, applications that we use for video conferencing and everyone get a chance to connect with each other. So, if when it is distributed or co-located does not matter, the face to face interactions get uh, the chance on working on that. A again, there you know that there are multiple teams working together for one uh, art or one program and they get a chance to align with each other. So, this is the PI planning you do plan for multiple teams when uh, if you remember the iteration planning, iteration planning we are planned for the iteration. In PI planning, we are planned for 4 iterations and multiple teams. If you have 10 teams, then also you are getting a chance to make a plan for all the teams and they can have the synchronizations with uh, each and every teams in terms of dependencies or in terms of risk with each other and uh, they work on a proper synchronized way. 
and everyone get one common mission, one common vision and one objectives to work for the next four iteration. Now uh, a PI planning, who facilitated that? It's facilitated by your agile release train engineer. So if I uh, talk about uh, your uh, co-located team, so in case of your uh, co-located, if you are in working as a co-located team, uh, you will be having only two days, eighth and ninth day of IP iteration. If you are a distributed team, in case of distributed team, you will be working sometime little more than two days, but you will not be spending the entire day of eighth or ninth. You may take some day at the end of, uh, on the last day, uh, for what purpose? You will be extending your meetings because there is a difference between time zone at different places. So it's not uh, very much required that uh, you need to complete it in two days if you are distributed. Uh, if even if, if you are distributed and can be work from the same time zone, you can complete in eight and nine days. But if there is a time zone difference, you may extend uh, it for another half day at the 10 or sometimes you may need to do some pre-planning even at the program level uh, at the seventh day of your IP iteration. So that way we uh, plan. So now one thing you need to uh, remember if you are not doing PI planning, you are not doing SAFE. SAFE is a very uh, structured framework and all this structure is actually bind together by the PI planning. So if you really want to work on scale agile framework and implement that, PI planning is very essential. So there are a few prerequisites we need to have to work on uh, PI planning. So as you know, at the team level, we have a product backlog in scale agile terms, it called steam backlog. Similarly, at program level, we have a program backlog. And in the program backlog, we'll be having list of features, the enablers, the architectural requirement in terms of uh, enabler, or there are some uh, non-functional requirement, maybe it can related to your previous uh, retrospections or some uh, infrastructures, anything can be possible as NFR. Now we have features, enablers, NFRs in our feature backlog. And to work on uh, your PI planning, the first thing we need to identify that what is prescribed is prioritize top 10 features. Once we have the top 10 features, then we need another, ob uh, another uh, objectives or another content that call business context. What exactly the business context we need for the upcoming PI. And then we'll talk about the product vision. What is my product vision? We'll talk about uh, the product vision, but we'll uh, soon uh, try to understand who is actually providing all this information. And we'll see each step by step how we can get that. And also we'll be having our architectural visions. Our top 10 features and our product visions definitely get influence from our uh, feature backlog. And this will be derived or provided by your product management. Your architectural vision also come from your NFRs or enablers that you have. Now, if I talk about business context, where can, who will be provide the business context? Business executive. Who will produ provide your product vision? Your product management. Who will provide your architecture visions? Your CTOs or your enterprise architect or uh, any system architect you have, they will able to provide you that architectural visions. So primarily just take about CTOs and uh, enterprise architect. Now once uh, we will done with the PI planning, what will be the output of PI planning? We'll have a committed program objective. So at a program level, you know what exactly program, I'm not going into the details of program. If you want to know what exactly I mean by program, you can watch the previous video of fundamental of or understanding what exactly the scale agile framework is. So once you have a committed objectives, we also will get uh, the SMART object. SMART is an acronym. Uh, if you remember uh, for acceptance criteria also, we use this term. It's a specific measurable, achievable, uh, relevant or realistic and time bound. So these are these are the acronyms and your objectives should follow uh, these acronyms. And it is created by each team with the business value assigned by the business owners. Similarly, we can have a program board, where in the program board, we highlight the new features, delivery date, features dependencies among other teams. Uh, uh, then we also have the relevant uh, arts. You have uh, 
uh, different uh, teams, those are not ex exactly uh, defined as a, your development team. For example, UX teams, that also comes in and we map their dependencies with other team. Then we'll talk about team work distribution, which team will be working on what stories and all those distribution also come up as a output of PI planning. So <clears throat> when we talk about the readiness, before you start working on PI planning, we need to have some kind of readiness in our uh, uh, plan and to work on those readiness we need three different natures of readiness one is organizational readiness content readiness and facility readiness so organizational readiness uh, planning scope and context that's one part of your organization readiness business alignment business alignment is also part of your uh, organizational readiness and we'll talk about what are the agile teams we have uh, which team is uh, primarily working for which product owner or what nature of uh, features they are working on that's our organization readiness content is very important and that will come from the business context we talked about the previous slide uh, business context, we have product visions and architectural visions. These are the content readiness. We start our PI planning with these three, these three content and we'll look into that in details when we go uh, to deep dive into our PI planning. And also, if you are running a two days meeting, you need to have readiness on your uh, facilities where you can accommodate 150 people or if you are working on a distributed you, how your video conference will work how everyone will communicate how everyone will share their program board all those facilities you need to have so facility facilities or tech supports similarly how you will uh, start working on communication now let's uh, jump into our uh, pi planning day one as you know these are the two days event we'll jump into uh, our day one and before we go into uh, our details of this day one I have a small announcement uh, that will be kind of a six to seven minutes of announcement if you don't uh, if you want to uh, skip that just proceed after seven minutes uh, scroll your uh, pointer after seven minutes you will be able to resume with this particular video hey friends this is Niladri uh, I just want to give you a quick update on uh, how we are collaborating and uh, there are a few areas I want to uh, just give you a message. I know uh, that you, many of you have subscribed and thank you for that. Many of you are giving feedback and I'm trying to uh, recover or I'm trying to answer you or uh, fix our uh, way of recording the videos and giving you inputs in that way. Just want to give you a quick update that uh, there is another way we have started to collaborate much more better. If you look into the screen, we are just talking about our Telegram group where we can have uh, many job postings. So you, if you are part of this group, you can get to know different jobs at different levels, Scrum Master, Product Owner, or in some other technology areas also, you can get notified and act it uh, on that particular post. Secondly, uh, we have... Uh, discussions on uh, your uh, job challenges or your day-to-day -day challenges that we are talking about. If you have any those kind of challenges that you want to talk or you want to share, you, you can post your particular concerns. There are many experts we have, including uh, me, many people also give you a response. And even there are few experienced people who are not uh, very known, but they have experienced that and they can give you that particular answers on your questions. And uh, that, we, that way you can actually don't need to wait for only uh, Agile Digest to give you the answer. There are many people where you can collaborate with. There are other points that uh, you can talk about our training areas. <clears throat> uh, we do many uh, trainings and uh, most of the trainings we do it when virtual. We'll talk about few training trainings in a while, but uh, you'll get notified for our, all our upcoming trainings. There are uh, expert opinions, many times, many people, they give their articles, they talk about what's trending, they talk about what you need to go for this particular situation. So you will get and connect with an experts within this group. Secondly, uh, we do many webinars and broadcasts and talk about what is trending in the market, how you can do this particular area, how you can uh, collaborate DevOps and Agile, or many other areas within Agile space. Sometimes we'll do little technical, and those are totally free. And we get published it 
within our telegram group. So, if you are really interested, you can join our telegram group and there are many more areas. I will not take much uh, time over here, I just want to talk about the, we so far have kind of 256 or little more as of uh, you know, March 2020, we are still growing. The link is below in the descriptions, if you are really interested, join here and we will talk about little more about three training trainings that we are doing. One is a sprint simulations. Sprint simulation is anyone who uh, have the knowledge of Scrum, you have the knowledge of Jira or Rally, but you want to have a real uh, practical experience. So this is the place where you can attend. We conduct it with nine member maximum. It's a limited seat training, totally virtual, 12 hours and we conduct it in kind of alternate days. You join there, you will get the experience of all the events, ceremonies, uh, the reports we prepared, how exactly the Scrum works. So that's uh, the details if you want to look for. I'll just slide into the next one. I'll just move back, take a look over here, I pause your screen, and if you're interested, you can uh, click on the link below and below I, in the descriptions, the link is there. You can go and look for more details. Now, the next one I'm talking about the Mastering Jira. This Mastering Jira is, if you look into from the introductions to advanced level, if you are uh, want to know about Jira, have some ideas, but there are some lags. This particular training is covering total understanding of working as Jira, so not any other part of Atlassian product, but Jira from base to enter advanced uh, administration where how you can do issues and filters, artifacts, practices, burn down chart, reports, dashboard, uh, administration, workflows, how you can make workflows, how you can customize fields, everything we cover in the 16 hours. You, if you are interested, the link is below. If you have any queries, join our Telegram group, ask the questions, we'll be happy to help. If you want to know more about this, uh, I'm just moving out from the screen for a moment. You can take a look, and this particular screen, what you have is the, all the course content for all the four days. Pause it, and then you can go for it. I'll talk about the next one. This is, a, we have recently introduced it, a 45 hours extensive training to make someone as a scrum master who have some idea of business analysis or uh, QA, you want to go towards a scrum master's role, this is where you can start with. We give a extensive training on understanding the fundamental of scrum, Kanban, artifacts, their metri scrum metrics, reports, different ceremonies, everything in details. Now, the next stage, we give you an overview of how as a scrum master you should have some idea on Jira and how Jira works. The third stage where we blend the stage one and stage two and make a simulations of your life project. Again, the same simulations, but here uh, this is actually something you will start it from the beginning. Over here, what we'll be talking about is uh, you will do the same uh, simulations with just practicing what you have uh, learned from your Scrum and Kanban stage one, and then we talk about the Zira. And finally, we talk about the stage four, will prepare you for getting ready for the interviews, we'll talk about your resume, and these are all the stages we, what we have. It will um, help you to prepare your resume, we'll do mock interviews, and those are the all areas, and you will be very much ready to go for a Scrum Master interview. These are all the virtual training. We'll talk about uh, the safe certifications, a classroom-based training that we are start, uh, currently doing in India, primarily in Delhi space. We are about to start virtual class on safe area as well that we'll announce soon in our Telegram group or in other some videos. And we do uh, safe training within this uh, Delhi area. So if anyone within your corporate or if you want to join, let's connect and we'll see how we can collaborate together and have this safe training together. This is all what I wanted to share in between. Thank you. Okay, now welcome back. Uh, day one, that's actually eighth day of your IP iteration. And these are the different uh, topics we talk about. 
there are multiple topics business context product solution and vision architectural vision and development practices these are the content readiness we'll start with our pi planning on day 8 with these three items and then we go into planning context and launch our pi once uh, we'll launch our pi the next activity it's a big activity team breakouts day 1 that means we have another breakouts at day 2 this is the first day, the team breakout. We'll go into deep dive what exactly we are doing inside the team breakout in a while. And once our breakout is done, the team creates a draft plan and that gets reviewed. And finally, the management makes some adjustment, whatever the review they have done. We uh, Scale Agile recommend a typical time frame for each of these activities. And those times are uh, like this. Uh, the first one, I can see a business context. It start at 8 and end at 9. So 8 to 9, 1 hour, the discussions on business context by your business owners happen. And if you look into uh, this diagram, you can see that um, our uh, amber line and there is a blue line. Amber line is that how much time that particular item will take and before uh, the green line is how much time already spent before this particular event. So if I talk about the architectural vision that's end at 11.30 and then we start our uh, planning context and launch and planning context and launch that actually 11.30 to 1. That team breakout day one that's three hours of activity and all the team members work on their own team areas to uh, do multiple activities we'll come into that in a while and then finally we will do a draft plan review and management review and problem solving if i talk about what exactly uh, these first three pointers are or first three topics are those are content readiness so business context is this uh, something that a senior executive line of business describe the current state of the business and what their upcoming objectives or vision is product solution and vision is product management presents program visions pictures uh, prioritizations uh, then uh, they do uh, talk about uh, different features they have what are the changes they have from the previous PI planning, any milestone they have, all they talk about on the product visions and solutions, solution and product visions. Then the architectural visions, we talk about system architect engineering, your system architect and engineers uh, or the CTOs, they talk about uh, the present, uh, present architectural uh, states they have and if there is any uh, frameworks needs to be developed or any uh, tooling tools they need to develop, any uh, new libraries they need to develop or any integration with existing library they need to work on, any changes on uh, the existing functionality in terms of architectures they need to do, all those discussions they uh, mentions for the upcoming uh, work keeping in mind the product and visions we have the business context we have the fourth item planning context and lunch this is where the agile release train engineers present how this process of planning will happen in case you are new to the scale agile framework and you are attending your uh, uh, scale uh, pi planning don't worry, your release train engineer will give enough guidance for a kind of one and a half hour for the every team members or all the RT so that it will be easy for you to proceed with the PI planning. Once these details is done, our team breakout starts. Team breakouts have multiple steps. We'll talk about all of those steps in a while, but this is something our each agile team, they plan their capacity, they break down stories from features, they load the stories into different iterations, they update the load for each iteration, uh, they identify dependencies, they identify risk and many other activities they do and finally they prepare a draft plan. Once the draft plan is ready, the next step we do is our draft plan review. So each agile uh, team, they present the draft plan and risk impediments, whatever their key planning output is, capacity, how much the load they have, what is the stretch objective. So stretch objective is not a right term if we're talking about 5.0, but what are the uncommitted objectives they have? They talk about that and they present it to business owner, product owner, product management, stakeholders, and any other team members. And the last step of day one is adjustment made by business owner because in the previous step, the team demonstrated and the business owner stakeholders, they have reviewed it 
and now the um, uh, it will be time it is the time to make any adjustment in case they fill. Now, let us uh, go into a deep dive of uh, this particular plan all these uh, seven steps we have and what exactly we are doing under each steps. Let us try to understand that. This is yes ok on the eighth day that is uh, the 50 percent of your PI planning you do on the first day of PI planning that is actually eighth day of your IP iteration. And this entire PI planning uh, even it is day 1 or day 2 is facilitated by your RTE. Now, let us uh, jump into the next uh, uh, area of content readiness or the first three topics that we have mentioned over here the content readiness this is what we talk about content readiness. So, how the content readiness is actually happening it started at 8 am in the morning and goes to uh, towards 11 30. So, it is kind of three and half hours. So, um, uh, three and a half hours yeah three and a half hours and where <coughs> your senior executive line of business they talk about uh, some briefing on kind of executive briefing. Business context that is come from the executive briefing from your senior executive, your product visions and briefing comes from your product management and the system architects they talk about the architectural visions. So, if I am talking about uh, business briefing or executive briefing they talk about the current state of the business and upcoming objectives. Your product management talks about program visions, uh, prioritize features and uh, you talk about the changes from the previous PI planning, meeting, milestones, everything the product manager talks about. And if you talk about our system architect, our system architects talked about um, any kind of uh, architectural change, architectural visions, uh, common framework or any tooling, libraries, uh, structural change on the um, technical side that all informations. Uh, system market talked about that is required for the business context what they mentioned. This is uh, this all discussion it seems like very quickly we are doing, but it is actually big lengthy discussions and goes for uh, 3 hours kind of. After that the P, uh, RT comes in picture and started talking about uh, how we will be executing the next activities the team breakout sessions and they start talking about ok product owners you have the content authority to make the decisions at user story level and how you will be working on you will be coming with all the features for your sprint and the team will be splitting those stories uh, splitting those features into small small stories and whatever is required from your product owner. The RT also talked about ok scrum master you have a responsibility to facilitate and manage the time box because we have a very limited time even it is 3 hours looks lengthy, but for you uh, or when you are working as a team of 7 8 members you have 8 features you need to break down into those feature into stories estimate them doing planning poker uh, multiple activities you do and it is not that big. So, that breakdown sessions uh, will take multiple uh, activities and it will time taking, but time uh, as a scrum master you need to check on the time and also whenever you will be running on uh, our uh, the team will be executing their activities as a scrum master you will represent your team's progress and join a SOS, SOS scrum of scrum where we will be having a checklist and you need to update how your progress is and we will uh, talk about this SOS in a while uh, when we will reach to that state. <coughs> and then team will update on the program board. Then uh, RT also talk about your agile teams that uh, their responsibility is to define the user story plan them into iterations and work out for the dependencies with the other team. This once this uh, discussion is done even uh, this kind of uh, discussions making everyone understand uh, takes kind of 1 hour to 1 and half hour and once that is done uh, it is time when we can start our team breakout. So, to talk about the team breakout there are multiple steps within the team breakouts. So, uh, we will talk about uh, there are kind of 7 steps we will talk about each step the step 1 set up the team area under the capacity for each iteration. Then step 2 pick a feature from the product manager that is the step 2. Step 3 estimate the stories using story points and maybe techniques you can use estimation poker or planning poker. The step 4 load the stories into the iteration then 
write the PI objective using clear statement. That is what also we need to do. Identify the uncommitted objectives and finally, we will identify any program risk and dependencies. So, if we talk about each and every steps under our team breakout. So, if we talk about each and every steps inside the steps what exactly we are doing uh, within our team breakout session, we will jump into the next slide and where we can see the step 1 set up the team area and enter the capacity for each iteration. So, if I want to set up my team area, this is what each team will be making some areas where they will be having one feature area and some iterations boxes. We will look into that what exactly this container will be containing once we will reach to that particular state. And they will be also creating some other areas where they will be having uh, team PI objectives, uh, uncommitted objectives, risk, dependencies or uh, risk board that they have if they are owning within the team level or the local risks they have. And finally, each team will be having some kind of these areas. So, team A have some areas as you can see in the screen, the team A have some uh, area for them, team B have similar kind of area for them and team C have uh, similar kind of area. So, this is the readiness of each team areas so that they can start populating what exactly they needs to be work on. Before we go into step 2, in the step 1 you need to identify your capacity. Now, as you know, if uh, what exactly the capacity is ideally uh, we should use our velocity to uh, treat it as our capacity for our upcoming iteration. Now, if you are doing it for the first time, you do not have a history, you cannot have your velocity, then there is a formula prescribed by uh, scale agile that you can use 8 points for a 2 week iterations for each member. Now, if you have a for an example, um, uh, for two weeks sprint ideally and so five members team will be having, uh, so when I am talking about member, it does not include PO and scrum master. So, five member teams, eight into five is equal to 40 story point will be the capacity. For a two week sprint ideally, if you are going for three week sprint, it will be something different. Maybe uh, you can have 12 points, 12 into five, it will be somewhere around 60 will be your uh, the capacity. Now, <clears throat> there are few areas that subtract one point for every team members vacations day and holiday. If anyone is taking some leave or vacations, you can subtract that one points and that way we will go. Once this is identified, you already had the area of your team. So, you will be making something like that, that the, all the teams, I am assuming that the, all the team have same five members, no one have any vacations. So, every team members have a capacity of 40 by default. And the last iterations that is IP iterations, we are not planning any capacity for it because we should not plan any work for the IP iteration. IP iterations will be for uh, innovations and planning, you will do root cause analysis for the entire PI, you will do the PI planning for next uh, upcoming PI or next PI. Now, this is what we have done as a step one within our team breakout session. Now, the step two of team breakout sessions, it will be uh, pick up the features from the product owner. So, once you have completed your step 1, it will be look something like this and this is something we able to see that uh, for each team, they will be having capacity equal to 40, load equal to nothing as of now because we have not loaded it anything yet. Now, we will go into <coughs> this particular area for each team and where we can see that all the team members just have uploaded their capacity and load for every uh, team and every iterations and the area will be look something like that. The next point what we will be talk about is our uh, pick up the features from the product manager. So, I know um, all the product uh, owners and product managers have uh, got some, uh, so product owners have got some features from their product management or they know what needs to be developed and they will be uh, having some initial stories they have identified for each features. So, from this diagram I can just assume the black uh, 
um, checklist is my features and the yellow one are the different stories under that features and that will be come to each product owner as each product owner is uh, working with one dedicated scrum team over here. So, they will be uh, that will assign or the, the team will start working on them and the team will then eventually may create few more new stories, new enablers or uh, they can remove some stories, they can split some stories and they will be working. That is the second step we are talking about. We still have to do seventh step within uh, this breakout session. So now uh, within uh, this particular step, uh, we are having uh, the stories are broken down uh, from the features as necessary. They already have planned it and now the next step what we will be doing is we will estimate the story points. So we in the sense as a each team member will estimate each stories. Uh, on a Fibonacci series, they will give a story points. Uh, maybe they can use a planning poker and as you can see in this diagram that each team have uh, one or two features. It, it not necessary you will be having only one or two. You may have three or four or more uh, or you can have ten features as well based on uh, how big the team is and how much you got from your product owner, how uh, each uh, features is broken down into how many stories and what your capacity allows based on that. You have these many stories for two features. Team A have two features, team B have three features, team C have only one features and all the features have some sets of user stories, a uh, few enablers maybe you can treat those the red one or the enablers and they have given story points to all of them. This is your step 3, the estimations. Now once we have broken down, uh, we in the sense as a team have broken down the stories from the features, estimated them, now it is time to put it into your iteration. So how you will be putting into your iteration, I am just take, taking an example of team A, the feature 1 and feature 2, they have these many user stories, they will put the stories in priority into first iteration, once the load will be come close to your capacity, they will not put any more stories on that iterations. <coughs> so keeping that in mind, if you look into this particular screen, that feature 1 have few stories uh, spill over to iteration 2 and that is actually not a bad thing. So in iterations 2, they have 8 and 3 from feature 1 and few other stories from feature 2. And that way you will be distributing your stories into different iteration and the same fashions team B have distributed their three features into uh, their iterations and team C have distributed their stories of one feature they had and as a whole it will be look something like this. So team A have some distribution, team B have some distribution of the stories and team C have distribution of some uh, features. Now if I talk about the next slide, we want to identify that where the feature is ending. So each feature's story is stretching to multiple iterations or maybe uh, completing in one iteration. We need to find out uh, the story of each feature is ending at what iteration. So for an example, feature 3 is ending at iteration 1.1 where feature 4, the last story is actually ending on iteration 1.2 and feature 5, the last story is ending at iteration 1.3. So I can map F3, the feature 3 at iteration 1.1, F4 at iteration 1.2 and F5 at iteration 1.3. So I can make a program board something like that for team B, I will be having something at F3, uh, iteration 1, iteration four, uh, 2 and 3 and in the same fashions I can have different different um, features mapped into our program board where all the teams they are just putting uh, their features into different iterations where they are ending. So this is a, uh, earlier what they have done, they have splitted the features into multiple stories and putting the stories where they will be ending uh, and they are having the categories of different features. Now at program board, at the left side we have all the team and at the x axis at the top we have all the iterations and each team is putting their features where their last story will be ending. This is the time. Uh, in this program board, they can start working on their dependencies as well. And in the program board, there is one important thing we can have are the milestones. 
Now, each features may have some dependencies with other teams. So if I am talking about the dependencies, for an example, these are the different dependencies we have. The milestone have some dependencies with team B and that dependency can be resolved somewhere around uh, 1.2. Similarly, team B have some dependencies with, uh, sorry, team A have some dependencies with team B and that uh, feature F2 will uh, needs to be have something completed from team B side at iteration 1.3 and F2 is planned for 1.4 and similarly that dependencies come up. So, if we look into uh, this particular legends over here you can see uh, this particular uh, diamond shape is your milestone events. All the features have that blue tags and the significant dependencies are in red rectangular box and the red strings are the dependency requiring stories, features or other dependencies. This is actually how you are mapping your dependencies. Now, once we come into a program board, let us try to understand little more about the program board. So, program board is a, uh, this is also we are still under team breakout session and we are just giving some brief of uh, uh, the program board. It is a key visual radiators and the sequence of inter team dependencies this radiation uh, radiator shows a sequence of inter team dependence. If there are multiple team working they may have some kind of dependencies with each other and it visualize that. Uh, feature level timelines when which feature will be completing that timelines also visualize and also milestone and key events it also shows along with you. There are a few other informations you can get from your program board. Okay. Let us uh, take a uh, deep dive on our uh, program board once again. So, as you can see this is one of the program board where we have uh, multiple dependencies and this is something we highlight in these two particular events and the day one we have team breakout and day two also we have a team breakout. In this uh, area we change the dependencies or we change the features from one creation to another or one team to another and from there we can actually have the dependencies uh, updated in our program board and this is uh, the time right ok. So, let us try to understand uh, these uh, features there are uh, sometimes if uh, some of the feature is does not have any red string attached what does that mean. So, in your program board you may have um, other um, dependent or cross functional teams. Let us assume these are the different team mem teams we have uh, Galaxy, Maverick, Spartan, Rocket. these are different name of the teams. Each team is working on multiple features. Few of them have dependencies, few does not have their dependencies. There are some cross functional teams also uh, you are working on for an example user experience team or system team and they might be having some kind of dependencies with them. Right, and we have uh, the you know, four iterations and IP iterations, and at the least, uh, at the last, we have our PI2. Now, once we have these dependencies, we may need to identify uh, there are few milestone events we may have. These uh, those milestone will also have some dependencies with uh, within our team or outside our team. The, everything can be possible. Now, if we want to understand that ok, if there are some features I know understand the features will be having dependencies with the inter uh, team or uh, other teams, but if the feature does not have any strings attached that means you can deliver these features. So, if I am just uh, removing the dependent features from here this is all the features we have and these features means these features can be delivered independently no dependencies are there. So, I am just trying to go uh, little details on the program board. Now, there can be another scenarios we can have. Uh, before we go into scenarios let us try to understand what exactly this uh, milestone we are talking about. So, milestone can be something related uh, to any major releases or trade shows or product announcement delivery from external supplier or you can have learning milestone there can be multiple activities you can plan it and show it on your program board ok. Now, we will uh, jump into uh, the another topic where we can see there are uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple features or couple of features have uh, marked some dependencies uh, like this. So, if you see F9 and uh, maybe F11, yes F9 and F11 they are also having some dependencies, but here the dependencies are mapped within the same team. 
program board should not you should not mention the dependencies if it falls under the same team dependencies is required to be highlighted in program board if the dependencies with other team members within your program so that's what don't show interdependencies within the same team now we'll talk about a uh, few other areas when you are planning some features don't plan for your ip iterations ip iterations keep it only for innovations and planning you do inspect and adapt you will do pi planning for next pi all these activities you will be doing uh, for your ip iteration you should not be planning i'll talk about three more uh, uh, situations of your pi planning so let's try to understand this is one of your program board within a program board i can see there is a bottleneck one team have lots of dependencies from different different uh, teams and features so this is something when you are doing pl uh, pi planning or some review you need to adjust this particular area right the another area this board uh, i can see the dependencies on the same iterations this is very risky i either uh, resolve the dependencies uh, for f9 f2 and f11 they are dependent with spartan rocker so you try to have that resolution of the dependency somewhere around iteration uh, 1 2 or 3 before that so don't uh, if you see so the dependencies coming on the same iterations and some the more risky over here is it's on the last iteration so there are high chances that you will not be able to resolve or complete f9 f2 or f11 because the dependence the chances of uh, resolving those dependencies is very low and one more situations i'll talk about that over here you can see i'm not showing about dependencies but one uh, team is too much overloaded if you look into the team galaxy there are multiple features coming into the uh, team galaxy where uh, spartan rockers have only one ninja have only one unicorn have only two maverick have only two we need to find out if we can distribute the load uh, evenly with all the other teams in that way the chances of uh, better quality and better delivery will be more increased okay this is a deep dive on uh, program board let's jump into our uh, topic that we are talking about uh, this particular area the step 5 of our team breakout where we'll be talking about uh, the pi objective so team will start writing the pi objective based on whatever they have committed or they have planned the commitment has yet not start um, committed they have planned something and based on their plan they created some of the pi objectives program increment objectives at the team level and those are the details uh, high level statement what the team believe they will be deliver as a in terms of objectives this is uh, the pi objectives and those uh, pi objectives will be come uh, for every teams and that will go back to uh, the teams area few example of the pi objectives for an example enable customer profiling you may need multiple stories or there can be one feature go directly as your pi objectives it not necessary it's uh, you are the best person to find out can one feature we go directly as it is as a feature or uh, there can be two three features make one objectives you can take the decisions and make your pi objectives the example the second example what we have is add security for third party sign in and then customize farewell to enable out of our domain email so these are uh, the different example once you have these features ready you can look into each team area each team have the different different areas and they have the pi objectives also appeared on their areas now we'll talk about uh, the next topic that is identify the uncommitted objectives i know pi objectives we talked about there is new concepts came in uh, scale 5.0 uh, it's the concept is not new the name is new it's uncommitted objective the same concept earlier was known as stretch objective so stretch objectives we'll talk about a uh, little about stretch objectives under the pi objectives they mention something that okay these are the few objectives those are uncommitted uncommitted in the sense we are not uh, uh, committing it we'll try based on the different uh, bandwidth and uncertainty resolutions we may able to achieve it but uh, don't uh, 
uh, don't take that as our commitment. And so uncommitted objectives, things not go always as planned. So we are keeping something as uncommitted. Uh, we want to keep some buffer for us. And this is not part of a team's commitment. So they uh, just uh, give it a try if they have bandwidth and any other possibilities. And this actually increase your predictability that if the team is committing for let's assume a 30 uh, story point or maybe 100 story points or 20 business values, their chances of meeting those business values is much more higher. The work is planned, but the outcome is simply not guaranteed. That's the PI objective. Teams can apply. So I am taking guarantee of my committed PI objectives, but I am not taking any guarantee for the uncommitted PI objectives. So teams can apply uncommitted objectives whenever there is a low confidence in meeting the objectives. This can be due to many reasons like dependencies with another team or supplier that cannot be guaranteed. Then you can think about the team has little to no experience with functionality of this type. Or you can think about there are a large number of critical objectives that the business is depending on and the team is already loaded close to full capacity. In those situations, uh, we still say, okay, we are not committing it, but based on our capacity, we will try and if we can achieve it, uh, that will be a bonus for us. Now, uncommitted objectives, benefit of uncommitted objectives, before we go into benefit, let's try to understand that you have a capacity. Don't uh, have uncommitted objectives more than 10 to 15 percent of your uh, total capacity. Otherwise, people will start misusing the concept of uh, uh, uncommitted objectives. Similarly, the few three benefits that I am talking about are adaptability to change, improve quality and economics, increase reliability. <clears throat> okay, step seven, that's the last step of our team breakout sessions where we will identify any program risk and dependencies. So each team they will identify some dependencies, they will identify uh, some risk for them and based on whatever they have identified that will be come back to each team area and you can see over here each team have their PI plan, the stories are planned, the uh, PI business objectives uh, or sorry PI objectives are there the uncommitted objectives are there, the risk are there, the dependencies are there and all of them are actually planned for the team and there is the team area. Now this is the end of our breakout session, the team is ready with their draft plan and it is time to get reviewed that draft plan. Each team, their key planning outputs what we have got so far is plan, uh, they have made the plan, they identified their capacity, they got the load. Uh, based on how much they have actually uh, committed for every iterations or planned for every iterations. Uh, they identify few PI uh, objectives, they identify potential risk and dependencies. This is what each team have identified. Now who will be reviewing that? We have uh, business owners, product management, other team members, stakeholders, everyone will review and this entire con uh, area or the work we talk it about, about a draft plan review and this is the draft plan. Once our draft plan is done, we may need to um, do some problem solving or to fix that. So how we will be doing? This is my draft plan at uh, the first thing I have. The review is done by my uh, business owners or product management and they identify few concerns or few challenges they have identified. So. They may mention, okay, the scope is we can actually do some changes in the scope or we can change some people from team member, one team to another team or any kind of resource, not only the human resource, some uh, infrastructure resource or any kind of uh, other resource also possible. Uh, they will talk about the dependencies, how we can move the features from one iteration to another iterations to resolve the dependencies and many other areas. So this is uh, all those points, they will uh, go into a problem solving meeting and uh, finally they will talk about the scope negotiation, resolve other problems and planning adjustment. This is what will be facilitated by your RTE and that is what we will do at the end, the last point, last topic of our uh, day one. Now when we were talking about uh, the team breakout session, it is a three hour session. Let us assume there are uh, 
10 teams working on each team have seven members so 70 people are working at different places and how we can actually get a track of everyone is going on right directions or somewhere uh, some teams need some help how we can uh, uh, expedite someone is doing little slow so for that scale agile uh, prescribed a concept called sos during your uh, pi planning when the team breakout is happening so we have a checklist sos is scrum of scrum where in a certain frequency every 20 minutes or 30 minutes all the team members will come to rt or rt will call all the team members to one place where we have a big screen with this checklist and each scrum master will update their states whether their team have identified the capacity for each iteration in the planning or uh, their team have uh, uh, identify most of the stories breakdown and put into the first two iterations or first uh, first all the iterations all those checklist can be possible so when i'm talking about first two iterations it at least uh, you'll give you uh, the idea that it's coming for the first two iterations and you can have first three iterations or first four iteration based on uh, how you want to have your sos done so as a rte this will be the checklist and Scrum Master will come in the first uh, um, 20, sec uh, 20 minutes, they will update how they are and then after 20 minutes they will come back and put some of the other checks, then again after 20 minutes they will come and update something else and that way this chart will keep on updated. As a RTE perspective, uh, they can take a um, understanding, okay, uh, team uh, B is much more behind, they are not able to do uh, in proper pace. So maybe RT will go to the team B sides and try to find out if there is some help they need or any area they got stuck and take that in the, uh, further to help the teams. Okay, now it's time uh, to talk about uh, the day two. We are done with our day, uh, day one. We have our draft plan ready, reviewed, management have uh, made some recommendations. Now the first thing on ninth day of your IP iteration or second day of your PI planning is planning adjustment. These are the uh, quick timeline. You can have a quick look on all these timelines. It starts at 8 and uh, finally when it is ending, I'll talk about that why we don't have the end time as of now. But uh, if these are the states we have, uh, planning adjustment, team breakout number 2, it's uh, 2 hours today means on the day 2, final plan review and launch, then we do a program risk, then we have a PI confidence vote, then we plan rework if required and then planning uh, the retrospective. So the second last step, plan rework if required, I don't know how much rework is needed. So uh, what we will be doing is we'll keep it open, we'll start it somewhere around uh, 2, uh, 2 p.m. maybe uh, 2.30 p.m. will be I think uh, the right one, I uh, typed it wrong, um, but from there it will be starting and then um, from uh, there it will be, you will start it at 2.15 and uh, based on how much time it needs to uh, do all your uh, rework, you will do that and finally we will go for a retrospective once everything is come, all commitment is done, we will do a uh, planning retrospective, it's not iteration retrospective or program retrospective, it's a planning retrospective and we'll come into that. So let's uh, try to understand the first step, 8 to 9 a.m. planning adjustment, what exactly we are doing? The adjustment made by business owner, product management, stakeholder, changes in planning scope. Then the breakout to the agile teams continue planning with yesterday's agenda and do the necessary adjustment provided at the team level PI objectives and business owner provide the business value. This is what we'll be having as a second step. The third step, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., we'll talk about all agile teams present to the group about their plan, risk, and impediments, no attempt to uh, resolutions. Uh, so we are not making a resolution of the risk, we are just identifying it. The customer accept the plan or the end user, uh, your stakeholders or business owner will accept the plan and finally the agile team will present the PI objective sheets uh, to all the uh, stakeholders and also what are the risk they identified for program that will also get updated by your RTE. 
Now program risk, this is what your RTE will be uploading into the roaming board and uh, the program board or the roaming board will be ready for the entire PI. Once this is done, we will go for a confidence vote to check if everyone is um, agreed or have that high confidence or low confidence or um, uh, they do not have any confidence and based on that we will decide whether we need to rework or not. If we need to rework, they will make the necessary changes and again uh, check if that uh, is okay with everyone, then we will jump into the retrospective state. So, let us try to understand the planning adjustment, how we start with. So, planning adjustment is actually your product management team, they come and talk about based on the yesterday what we have done, uh, the review and based on our findings, we will talk about some changes, our product owner will advise some changes to make on the scope, people and uh, resource. It is a one hour activity, so it will be very detailed for each team members, so that they can get to know what exactly the changes they need to do. Once this adjustment is announced, then each team will go for another level of uh, another round of breakout for the day 2, it is a team breakout 2, where they will start working on uh, making the adjustment. So, team continues plan based on the agenda from the previous day and making the appropriate adjustment. Once uh, the adjustment is done, they may work for changing on the PI objective because they have change in scope, they have change on features, resources and the objectives will also be required to change. They may remove few objectives to uh, uncommitted, they will add new objectives and each team will be having those kind of uh, changes on the objectives. When the objectives is there, the business owner will start giving values uh, to each team. The business owner will go to each team areas and start giving business values to all the objectives. Even it is uncommitted objectives or plain objectives, the business values will be goes for all of them. Once our business values is given, uh, the adjustment of the objectives is there, it will be updated in uh, all the team, uh, all the teams area. Uh, where they have the business value. So, if you can look into this particular objectives, you can see all the objectives have some business values and the uh, objective also uh, are planned at different uh, levels, few of uh, new items, few goes into your uh, uncommitted objectives. Now, the next step, once we have done the plan review and launch, that is the final and uh, big event. Uh, these are the four, uh, five steps we have presenting the plan, risk and we will identify risk and impediments, then we will uh, take a consent of uh, the business owner, how confident they are and then finally, the team will present the PI objectives and if there, uh, there is any concern still the business owners have, they will make that adjustment. So, to understand these steps, let us try to look into this particular 5 steps activity. As you can see, we have these 5 states mentioned, uh, presenting the plan what exactly each team does, team A for an example, they will present their plan, okay, this is what their plan is, team B will present, okay, this is our final plan and this is their presenting to the all audience. So, team C is also presenting all their activities, all their, uh, uh, all their plan to the entire audience. Now, we also need to present the next item, risk and impediments. So, each team after, just after showing their plan, they will be show their uh, risk as well. So, it is not that team A will show their plan, team B will show their plan and team C will show their plan and then again team A will show their uh, risk, it is not like that. Team A will show their plan and then team A will show their identified risk, then team B will show their plan, then team B will show their identified risk and team C will show their plan and their identified risk. In that way, uh, all the team members, sorry, all the teams will uh, show their uh, risk to the entire audience. At the same time, when the team creates the risk, few of the risk are local to the team, few of the risk may be program level risk. All those program level risk will be collected by RTE and that will later move into the program level risk board or the roaming board. We will come to that once we will reach to that state. Now, once this is done, the next step we will talk about uh, the taking business owner confidence. As of now, we have planned it, we reviewed it, we made adjustment, we replanned and finally, we are presenting the risk and plan what we have, but we need to 
get the confidence or the consent of our business owner. So the team is actually asking to the business owner, is it acceptable? Team A is asking, team B is asking, team C is asking by showing, okay, this is what the plan they have. And based on their uh, planning, that question asked from every team. And finally, they will get uh, uh, consent, okay, if it is ready or not. The fourth step under final plan review and launch is uh, presenting the PI objectives. So each team, they will be presenting, okay, this is the PI objectives we have and team B will say this is the PI objective and business value we have. And finally, uh, if there is any adjustment required on that same step based on uh, the objectives they have mentioned, the business owner will mention, okay, uh, the business owner have some concern, the team will make some adjustment and show that to the entire audience once again. If the business owner still have some concern, it will go on that loop until business owner uh, is very much confident what exactly we have done. This is so far we have done on the, our final plan review and lunch. Now we'll talk about the program risk. Each team have some risk identified and few of the risk again I say can be a local risk, few of the risk can be your uh, program level risk. So your, stake, uh, your RTE will pick one by one risk from each team areas and if it is a program risk, we'll talk about or ask to the entire uh, team members or whoever is responsible that if anyone wants to own it or anyone uh, help mitigate it or in, uh, do you think uh, this, is, uh, this is, uh, issue is resolved or this risk is, is uh, resolved or uh, we'll accept it as it is. So based on uh, the final uh, information received by RT, that risk will go into the particular area of the roaming board. Roaming board is resolved, owned, accepted and mitigated. We'll talk about those in a while. And similarly, in the same fashion, all these program level risk will go into different quadrant of our roaming board. Now, what is resolved, what is owned, what is accepted and what is mitigated? Let's try to look into this. Resolved, the teams agree that the risk is no longer a concern. Owned, someone on the train takes ownership of the risk since it cannot be resolved during PI planning. Accepted, some risks are just facts or potential problems that must be understood and accepted. Mitigated, teams identify a plan to reduce the impact of the risk. So that's uh, the roaming risk. Right, the next topic we'll talk about the PI confidence vote. As we already talked about dependency resolved, uh, risk were addressed, and now it is, it's a time to take a confidence from everyone that everyone have the same confidence uh, of this particular planning we have. And that if uh, the, we have low confidence, We'll, uh, see, we'll see that as a rejection. If it's a high confidence, we'll uh, take that as an acceptance. If it is a rejection, then we, that may go, uh, get escalated and a corrective actions may required. We may need to adjust the plan. How will I identify uh, the vote or confidence from everyone? The, uh, the uh, technique is called fist of five. So fist of five, everyone is shows finger. Uh, one is no confidence, two is little confidence and five is very high confidence. And based on uh, the majorities of those fingers uh, from majority of the people, we can identify uh, what's the current state of our planning. If it is one or two finger, that means team will rework on the plan. If it is three, four or five, then we think, okay, it's a moderate or high confidence the team has and the management should accept that commitment. So we need to get the confidence of all involved parties uh, so that uh, we can proceed with that. One more important information that if we have one or two uh, votes, then any person voting less than three can get an opportunity to raise their concern may add few points to our roaming board. Sometimes uh, uh, we may need to change our planning or we may need to add some risk in our risk board because of their uh, con low confidence of some potential risk we have. Next step, once we have done our confidence vote, uh, we may need to do some adjustment based on the low confidence we have received. So if required, team continuously are working on their plan until a good confidence vote and they will um, do that 
uh, for some times and hopefully after some times we will get a good confidence port. And then planning retrospective, once our this particular uh, all the uh, activities are done, the last step what we have is PI planning retrospective. So, PI it is not a retrospective for your any uh, program level activities or iteration level activities, it is just the planning retrospective we are doing. We will talk about what went well, what did not go well and how we can do better. So, that uh, you I am not talking about the process of doing retrospective now, but I believe everyone you understand how retrospective uh, happens and the same way you will be do your retrospections, everyone will put some uh, pointers to different items and uh, the next action items or improvement areas that will be working on our upcoming PI or the next PI. Let us try to understand once our PI planning is done, what we will be doing. So, each team have their own PI objectives, team 1, team 2, team 3 and team 4, they have different different PI objectives as a team level. So, RTE and our stakeholders take all those PI objectives and then summarize those objectives into a program level objectives. The program level objectives will come from each team and those program level objectives is uh, shared among all the teams. So, each team they for the iteration they have iteration goal, for uh, PI level they have team PI objectives and as a whole uh, uh, art they have a common program PI objectives and that they will be working on. And these PI objectives later will contribute to your roadmap and also help improve the forecast for the upcoming 2 or 3 PIs. And that actually taken by your product management to update your roadmap. Okay. After PI planning, uh, you will have your program board ready which uh, will help tracking dependencies during uh, scrum of scrum events uh, that will also help you uh, maintain. Uh, or manually or throughout your ALM tools, you can have that your program board and that needs to be maintained based on how you are progressing, if the dependencies is resolving, new dependencies arise, you will be maintaining it. It can be maintained by uh, on your uh, ALM tool or it can be maintained uh, manually if you are uh, managing a physical board. So, once your PI planning is done, each team will get some uh, details of uh, pre-populated iteration backlog for the upcoming PI, the team PI's objective, they will get iteration plan and the risk and that will get by all teams. If there is some program risk, that will be uh, with your uh, RT. So, this is what each team will take with them from the PI planning. Each team will take a pre-populated iteration backlog for the upcoming PI. The team will take their PI objective, the team will take uh, the iteration plan, the team will take the risk. The program risk again RT will take it. Now, after the PI planning, uh, the team uh, will go back to their own uh, area of executions and they will do uh, iteration planning for the first iteration um, based on whatever they have planned. They just need to give a uh, um, another fine tune on the iteration level planning and they will start executing that first iteration. Now, let us talk about uh, if you have more than one train in your uh, scale agile framework. So, for an example, you have 300 people, you may not be able to manage it with one uh, art. So, you may need two art or three arts and if you have more than uh, one art, you need to have a solution layer or large solution layer where one solution train will be there which uh, in, within one solution train there will be. Uh, multiple art or agile release train. So, if this is where we are doing the PI planning at art level and in a solution train, if I look for a solution train, one solution train within the solution train will be having these many uh, three arts and also you can include supplier also as a part of your solution. Now, if you are doing eighth and ninth day as a art level PI planning, we need to do some pre-PI planning at a solution level and that we do on the sixth day of IP iteration, that is pre-PI planning and after the iteration all the PI planning is done from uh, the art level at solution level we do a post-PI planning. And if you look into the framework, uh, the large big picture you can see at the solution level, uh, the um, vertical bar you have for PI planning, you have 
pre and post for your uh, solution layer. Okay, let's uh, try to understand uh, this one again, what we do in the pre-PI planning in the solution train. Uh, in the solution train, prepare for agile release train supplier and provide and coordinate uh, inputs about uh, objectives, milestone, business context, uh, solution context that you do as a pre-PI context on a solution train. Now, after that, we start on eighth and ninth day for our uh, actual PI planning at the team, uh, sorry, at art level. Once the art level PI planning is done, uh, the second half of day 10, or uh, the last day of the IP iteration, we'll do a post PI planning. So we follow up for agile release train or supplier, integrate the result of art planning into visions, roadmap, solution level PI objectives, and all those we work on. So, what exactly uh, we do in this solution train pre and post PI planning, it supports and coordinate the various arts in the solution. The planning at higher level, the solution uh, development alignments. Then uh, we talk about provide directions and visibility into their trains. And there, there are a few other uh, advantages we have. Let's, uh, you can, if you want to read, you can just pause here and read that. I'll just go ahead and talk about pre and post PI planning, what the inputs and outputs we have. So if you talk about inputs for pre and post PI planning, inputs we can have solution roadmap, we can have vision, we can have solution intent, we can have capabilities, we can have solution enablers. These are all come as an input for your solution train PI planning or pre PI planning and post PI planning. What is the output of uh, pre and post PI planning? You can have a smart solution PI objective. In the art level, we had PI objective. Those all PI objectives are smart. I am not repeating the acronym of smart right now, but uh, you will get those uh, PI objectives at a solution level. Then you can also get a solution board. We had a program board at uh, art level. You will get a solution board. We'll talk about how the solution board is looks like. And then you get a confidence vote of solution PI objective at the solution. We'll talk about who are the participants so that you can actually find out who give those confidence vote at the solution level. Then context for solution demo. So a solution planning board highlights, so what is the solution board? A solution planning board highlights the capabilities, anticipated delivery dates and any other relevant milestones for the solution. Who participates on pre and post PI planning? So if I talk about participation, solution stakeholders, solution train engineers or STE. In program level, we had RTE. At solution level, we have ST. Solution management. The, in program level, we had program management. Here we have solution management. Solution architect, solution system team, release management. Uh, then uh, representative from all art and suppliers from program levels, they also participate. If we look into a quick overview on what are the steps we do on the pre-PI planning, this is what we do in pre-PI planning. Uh, we do a PI summary report. Uh, then it's actually started 8 to 1.30. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, business context and solution report, solution backlog, and next PI features what they will be working on because uh, that features will be actually go into your program level as a feature backlog. If I talk about the post PI planning, that's also again in solution, that's happened on the 10th day of IP iterations. Uh, over there, we'll be talking about uh, making some PI planning report, what uh, all, the T, uh, all the art label have done. They will launch the solution, and then they will review solution level plan, discussion on risk identified at individual art and solution level context. And if necessary, team revise the plan, may need follow up meetings with retrospective hours. And finally, uh, the planning retrospective and moving, uh, they will do some planning and retrospective for the solution level pre and post planning and move forward. Output of pre and post PI planning, smart solution PI objectives, I'm not going into the details. Uh, we'll talk about the solution program board and the solution commitment that you will be getting. If you want to have a quick look in the solution board, this is how a solution board will looks like. We had a program board after PI planning at a program level for each art. Over here, we have multiple art, art one, art two, and art three. Each art at solution level, they have different capabilities 
and they may have some enablers and in you the same uh, it, the board will looks like same instead of features over here or instead of team you will be having the art and the iteration will be remain same you will still have milestone at solution level you will still have dependencies between uh, one capabilities to another art you can have the inter art uh, dependencies mapping with capabilities PI objectives are uh, at different levels. We'll talk about uh, if we are having the PI objectives at we have two different team, sorry, two different train. Each train have four four team, so each team have their own PI objectives. Now at team levels, uh, if we come into program level, each program at one PI uh, PI planning they have uh, one PI level objectives. So if I have two train, I'll be having two PI objectives. Those two PI objects will combine into one solutions and that will become our solution objectives. And that is way the P, uh, all those PI objectives from team to program to solution is actually get rolled up and everyone get their local context solution get their local so, uh, solution level context, uh, program gets their local program level context and team definitely they have defined their PI objectives. So, they have their own objectives. Okay, so this is the last slide where we will uh, talk about the business benefit of PI planning. So, uh, I will just read it out, you can also uh, uh, pause the screen and read it. Uh, the first one is establish face to face communication across all team members and stakeholders, building the social network the art depends upon, aligning development to business goal with the business context visions and team and program PI objectives. Identifying dependencies and fostering cross team and cross art collaboration. Providing the opportunity for just in uh, just the right amount of architectural and lean user experience guidance. So, we do not make the entire architecture for the program, we just make the architecture as much as required for that particular scope, maybe 2 uh, PI maximum or 3 PI. Matching demand to uh, capacity and eliminating excess work in progress and the first decision making is also there. That is all from my side for the scale agile another video. This time I have planned for PI planning. I will bring up more uh, videos on some other part of scale agile till the time uh, stay tuned. If you like this video subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon so that I will get to identify that you are actually uh, get helpful from this video and that will also motivate it for me. Till that time have a wonderful day, bye bye.